premature birth is the second greatest killer of babies worldwide after pneumonia. A report called Born Too Soon says one in ten babies throughout the world is born before the 37th week of pregnancy. As a midwife, Carol Precern assists women who are giving birth. She also has seen newborns die. It's a devastating experience and it, it touches you. You remember people's faces. Carol Precern works for the Partnership for Maternal, Newborn and Child Health. She says much can be done to prevent premature births. You make sure people are not having their babies too young. You make sure if they have pre-existing conditions, like if they're too underweight, which is quite common in the developing world, as you'd know. But you've got to also look at if somebody's had a history of a preterm birth, they need much more attention. You want to look at the spacing between births, so you don't want people having their children too fast, because that can lead to prematurity. There are simple things that can help a premature baby survive. You can give the mother steroids before the baby is born. That helps the lungs to mature. That's a very cheap, very cost-effective intervention. After birth, the baby can be placed on the chest of the mother. This kangaroo care method keeps the baby warm. Dr. Joy Lawn works for Save the Children. Kangaroo mother care, even compared to care in an incubator, halves the risk of death. The report says the number of premature births is increasing in both wealthy and developing countries. Christopher Housen is with the March of Dimes. Over 60% uh, of preterm births uh, occur in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. Wherever a baby is born, the child can have health problems if the birth happens even a few weeks early. Experts say they want to better understand why babies are born early, how to reduce the number of premature births, and how to help premature babies survive. I'm Shirley Griffith. This dramatic strengthening of cancer defenses was after 14 days of a plant-based diet and exercise. They were out walking 30 to 60 minutes a day. Although Pritikin started out reversing chronic disease through diet alone, later, to his credit, he added an exercise component as well. And it's great for his patients, but scientifically it makes it hard to tease out which is doing what. Maybe the only reason their blood started becoming so effective at suppressing cancer growth was because of the exercise. Maybe the diet component had nothing to do with it. So they put it to the test. They set up an experiment with three groups. The first group did nothing, control group. The second did diet and exercise, and the third group was just exercise. The diet and exercise group had been put on a plant-based diet for 14 years, along with moderate exercise, just like walking every day. The second group was just exercise, but they were hardcore. Right? Uh, not just exercise, but 14 years of daily strenuous hour-long exercise, like calisthenics. But they ate the standard American diet. In fact, they were actually overweight. They'd been killing themselves in the gym every day for 14 years, and still their BMI averaged 26.5, whereas the, uh, those on the plant-strong diet were um, ideal body weight. But let's see who's better at fighting cancer. The researchers wanted to know if you exercise hard enough, long enough, can you rival some strolling vegans? They took petri dishes brimming full of human cancer cells and dripped blood from each of the three groups on different dishes to see whose blood was better at suppressing cancer growth. What do you think they found? Whose blood was better at killing cancer cells? This is a graph measuring cancer cell apoptosis, or programmed cell death. Cancer cells programmed to commit suicide. It's one way our body gets rid of cancer cells. Basically, our immune system taps them on the shoulder and says, look, you know there's only one way this is going to end, don't you? Well, you take the honorable way out. It'll be quicker, easier. If they start the chemo and everything, it's going to get messy. Take the easy way out and just kill yourself which our immune system is sometimes capable of convincing cancer cells to do. 
Here's the blood of the control group. Not very persuasive. Cancer's like, take your programmed cell death and shove it. And as we saw before, here's the effect of the blood of those in the pritikin group. After 14 years on a plant-based diet, you can bet their bloodstream was clearing cancer cells left and right. But what about the hardcore exercise group in the middle? Did they clear cancer just as good as the pritikin group? If that's the case, then it wasn't diet at all, right? The exercise was a critical component. Were they somewhere in the middle, showing the exercise helped, but you know, not as good as a plant-based diet group? Or were they down there with the control group? Maybe exercise helped with other things, but you know, just not at killing cancer. And what they found was this. Exercise helped, no question but literally 5,000 hours in the gym was no match for a plant-based diet. Here's an actual photomicrograph of the cells in the control petri dish stained so they release light when they die. As you can see in the control group, there were a few cancer cells dying. Even if you're a couch potato eating fried potatoes, your body's not totally defenseless. But here's the hardcore strenuous exercise group, right? cancer cells dying left and right but nothing appears to kick cancer butt more than a plant-based diet.